Well, Donald Trump calling out media companies for referencing or outright publishing a document full of unverified and damning allegations against the president-elect. Is this a lesson for Trump haters in the media to play it straight? Hi, everyone. I'm Eric Bowling. Welcome to Cashin' In. Our Cashin' In crew this week, Mercedes Schlapp, Rachel Campos Stuffy, Gina Loudon, and Juan Williams. Welcome, everybody. Now, Mercedes, I've got a feeling this won't be the last time Mr. Trump has to take on someone in the media for reporting some fake news. You know, rightfully so. I think Donald Trump has been able to uh, set, it, set the record straight and be able to take on some of these media outlets. Or let's look at BuzzFeed, which is more of a pop culture site. I mean, let's be real. Ben Smith, uh, the, the editor of this site, basically went, sent a memo to his staff back in 2015, Eric, telling the staff that it's entirely fair to call Trump a racist. That is not what I call fair and balanced journalism in any way. They want to be what they call impactful journalists, but what they're doing is that they're harming the industry. Uh, they're definitely playing a, a lane, deciding that they're going to go and try to destroy the tr Trump presidency, which I think at the end has backfired. And not only that, uh, Mercy, let me bring this to Gina. Gina, Ben Smith, the editor-in-chief, also sent a memo to his own employees saying, by the way, these allegations, we can't confirm them, but you know what, we're going to publish them anyway. I mean, i got to say, if there's going to be any litigation, that's going to be evidence, number one piece of evidence. As it should be, Eric. I think that the beauty in all this, though, because I like to try to take away the positive, <laughs> is that President-elect Trump took the term fake news, which was a term of the left. He absolutely stole it, flipped it on its head, and now it belongs to the right. I don't know that the left is going to be able to use the terminology fake news anymore because everyone's going to remember this example when they think of the word fake news. So I think it has backfired on them. I think Mercedes, Mercedes is right, and I think we all know somebody who was on the left who has watched all of this clickbait fake news madness and now has flipped to the right. Now let me throw it to Juan. Now Juan, uh, NBC, we know NBC made two $200 million investments in BuzzFeed. One two years ago, one last year. They must be scratching their heads saying, boy, we have to distance, uh, distance ourselves from that fake news site BuzzFeed. I think they may have difficulties or differences, but I must say the owners of BuzzFeed have in fact said that they agree uh, with the editor's decision to go ahead. I don't necessarily agree because I think that's information about Donald Trump had been around for a while and, and Donald Trump even saluted news organizations this week who said it is unsubstantiated and therefore they did not publish the story. But I think it's important for all of us here to stop for a second and realize that CNN did not do what BuzzFeed did. And what Donald Trump did in his press conference was basically use Jim Acosta of CNN and CNN as a punching bag to go after the media, to go after the press. I think us at Fox News, we know what it's like to be the punching bag for an administration and be ignored. Yeah, we've been there treated. for eight years. Yeah. But, but, the, but the bigger <laughs> point is one that Shepard Smith raised, which is that the president of the United States, or the president-elect in this case, should not be about delegitimizing news organizations. Well, that's what Obama has I haven't he heard. Has, Wait, hold look, on. Shepard Smith, uh, all due respect, was he saying that about President Obama over the last eight years? Because we had, wait a second. Had, we've Obama, had several White House reporters who never got a question oh, wait, in. But that's, Juan, you different. Notice? that's different than saying, right there in a press conference, I'm beating you up, I'm calling CNN out. When CNN, well, okay, CNN fair enough. on a legitimate However, story. I don't remember Ed Henry going back after Obama four, five, six, oh, seven I remember. times. Oh, I, listen, listen, Bill O'Reilly, Brett Baer, they've all gone after Obama, but I think it was a legitimate story to say that American intelligence right. agencies had this dossier and that it was in a document given to President it's, Obama it's and the President-elect. It's unsubstantiated. Why? But it was given you, to them. Juan Williams would never report that. That. Juan Williams I would report, would never I report certainly that. would report that it was given to our president-elect. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm saying you wouldn't report the details of, of its uh, unsubstantiated claims. I wouldn't. I of didn't. course you wouldn't, and you shouldn't. Uh, Rachel, your thoughts? I was just going to say, this, wasn't, this flimsy story wasn't just potentially damaging for Donald Trump. Uh, it's damaging to our cultural fabric. Thanks a lot, BuzzFeed, for giving us parents um, another presidential sex act for us to explain to our children. Um, I think the left wants it both ways here. They want to, um, uh, they've, they've coarsened our, our, our culture to the point where even if these allegations were true, I'm not sure this would have taken Donald Trump down. And not because I think he's a, a, a Teflon candidate. Um, I think it's because our culture right. has gotten so swampy and so disgusting and toxic. 
Audrey, that this stuff is no longer shocking. And so the left wants it both ways. Well, they want to pollute our culture, and then they want us to clutch our pearls when we hear this kind of information I'm, come I'm, out. Um, Rachel, I'm, I'm glad in, you, in a very poor way. I'm glad you, you, you that, brought that up. That delegitimizes them and 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 the and the media. All right, take a listen to this. These so-called journalists not just going after Trump. They're targeting his nominees, too. Check this out. Disgusting and racist comment about the family of Jeff Sessions. An MTV writer mocks his Asian granddaughter at his confirmation hearing this week, saying he should, quote, return the Asian baby to Toys R Us where he stole her from. Staying with you, Rachel. The irony is the left calls Sessions the racist. <laughs> This is absolutely outrageous. And remember, this was MTV who, you know, just a couple of weeks ago was giving us lectures on, on white privilege. Um, they are, they are, they're, 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 it's such a selective outrage. Where are all the people on the left? A few people have come out to their credit um, and, and told him he should get off of Twitter. He absolutely should. But MTV should fire this man. This is absolutely outrageous and flies in the face of all the multiculturalism and, and tolerance that MTV purports to be advancing. Mercedes, were you shocked by that, that comment as well? No, I'm not anymore. I, we have to be real here, Eric. I mean, MTV is no news organization. It's like BuzzFeed. I mean, they try to just make that splashy headline and make these outrageous comments. They can't be taken seriously. I mean, these guys are trying to just uh, try to target these younger uh, demographics. It's not working. I think at the end, they just got to be ignored. I mean, it's just... I'm, I'm, it's, it's a, I don't know, uh, uh, Mercy. I think if, if someone had said that about someone on the left, about, oh, about, no. about the, 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 the family of uh, the Obamas, the, they would left would be going apoplectic about how racist oh, of a comment that was. Uh, let me bring Jean in. Yeah, well, you know, Eric, this is my thing. I, I am shocked, but I'm not shocked that they said it. I'm shocked because I never hear anyone on the right, even in the most closed circles, ever say anything of the sort. This is the talk of the left. I've even heard this from people on the left. Sorry, Juan, not you, but, uh, but others. And, and, I, and I can say to you that I hope they just keep rattling their mouths because it is exposing who they actually are, and it also exposes a true gentleman like Senator Sessions, what, what the depth of his humility and the depth of his self-control is and exactly why he should be confirmed. All right, so Juan, let's stay with let's stay with the comment, the MTV comment. Yeah, B terrible, right? I mean, you, oh, you I, have to I, condemn it. I don't like it at all. I mean, you know, I, I have multiracial grandchildren. I've had people ask me, well, how can their names be Pepper and Wesley? Like, oh, like a black kid, or in this case, a multiracial kid can't have that name. It's a white name. I think it's so racist, so ridiculous. And in this case, this was a tweet from an MTV writer. So I don't know that we should blame. MTV. They said that his opinion does not reflect their opinion, but I agree with all of you. I think it is over the top. Let me just quickly add on the race but, front. But that Juan, when but I heard, Juan, that, when it, I heard Juan, Mercedes, hang on, Mercedes, when I heard you say, oh, Donald Trump hasn't done anything racist, and they say, oh, Ben Smith and BuzzFeed said he could be called racist, I heard Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, now one of the, the new president-elect's uh, best allies, say that his behavior in the past was the definition of racism. That, uh, look, Paul Ryan is not part of a news organization. I, I'm talking about plain, simple journalism. This is about well, reporting the news. Right. This is an editor of, a, of a, what he, he con they consider a news site saying, you guys are, it's all fair game. You can call him a racist. Well, I just don't, it just doesn't fit. You, mean, you, what wouldn't, I you wouldn't do report on what Paul Ryan responds to. It's irresponsible the obsession. Well, guys, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It, it speaks. I want Juan to react. Go ahead, Juan. Juan, it speaks to the obsession. Well, I was just going to say, I don't, I mean, Paul Ryan said that. I mean, to me, you know, for Donald Trump to jump up and scream about the fake news and BuzzFeed and all the rest, uh, you know, his behavior, he's the guy that started the birther movement. Remember that? that talk about fake news. And everybody reported on it and followed it for months. All right, let's get Gene in. The, the, I would that just say the bottom line the is this. Every... Every nominee, every nominee brings their family with them to these confirmation hearings. And what this quote does, it exposes the obsession on the left with race and, and, and their willingness to even hurt um, in order to make their political point. All right, let me, Gina, wrap it up. We've got to go quickly. Your thoughts, yeah, final yeah, thoughts. Yeah. Well, I do think that I do think that uh, race is something that is used as a weapon by the left, and I think that people on the right really do look at content of character, and that's where their focus is, and that's where it's always been, and I think that's where President-elect Trump's focus has always been as well. And it's so funny how they never want to look at the good record of things that people have done on the right, but they always want to focus in on one word and twist it and repeat the lie over and over again. It's Alinsky. So